Hi everyone. Now in 2012, a little known company called Brand Finance launched a report on the financial value of the British monarchy. Now they decided that the monarchy was worth £44 billion to the British economy. Their last report, published in 2017, put that figure at £67 billion. Now in truth, these numbers are absolute nonsense, yet journalists still repeat these figures without question. But first off, let's look at that main figure, the headline figure. In the report, they break that down as £25.5 billion in tangible assets, real stuff that you can identify and quantify. Then they add £42 billion of intangible value. Now, I'll come back to the intangible value shortly, but first let's look at those tangible assets. Now, this report includes in that figure the Crown Estate, the Duchies of Lancaster and Cornwall, the Royal Collection and the Crown Jewels. All these assets are national property and nothing to do with Britain retaining the monarchy. The Crown Estate and the two duchies are property companies. That property will still be there once the monarchy is gone and their value to the taxpayer will only go up. Uh, why would that be? Well, the Crown Estate's value is always going up and we will then add to that the income from the two duchies, which currently goes to Charles and the Queen. Now, the Royal Collection, which includes art and the Crown Jewels, may have a hypothetical value but cannot be sold and so their value is only in their historic and cultural significance. Now remember the, the report is not saying that £25 billion uh, pounds is income, it is just the value of the assets. Now the report mentions the Crown Jewels separately but their figures only include the Royal Collection as a whole, no doubt because the Crown Jewels cannot be valued and are considered priceless. None of the tangible assets have any place in evaluation of the monarchy or it's worth the to the economy. All these assets belong to the nation and would remain in our hands with the abolition of the monarchy. So, you know, we can knock that £25.5 billion off brand finances total right away. Then we turn our attention to the intangible assets. Now, according to the Collins English Dictionary, intangible means abstract or hard to define, and uh, the suggested synonyms, words that mean more or less the same thing, include vague, invisible, unreal, imaginary, and fanciful, which all sounds relevant. The report states with confidence that the monarchy generated an estimated uplift of £1.76 billion to the UK economy. Uh, now I've gone through the report and can't see a single bit of evidence to back this up. That £1.8 billion figure is broken down and includes global press coverage, informal endorsements, uh, royal patronage, media industry and the arts, trade and tourism. They also add the surplus income from the Crown Estate and the value to companies of coats of arms and royal warrants. Now more on warrants and coats of arms in a moment. Royal tourism revenue is a complete fiction. If you don't believe me, please do uh, watch The Monarchy is Not Good for Tourism on Republic's YouTube channel. Trade, well that claim is as flimsy as the tourism one. The best brand finance can say is that trade delegations join the royals on overseas trips. But you know, so what? They also join government ministers on official uh, visits overseas and are involved in countless other international networks that facilitate Britain's global trade. There isn't any evidence that having William and Kate tagging along influences the investment decisions of global corporations. Brand Finance also claims the royals are responsible for a £50 million boost in media and the arts. Why? Because lots of people watch The Crown on Netflix. I'm not sure what we should make of that. I'm not sure what that tells us about the popularity of Orange is the New Black. Um, that prisons are hugely popular? I don't know. But last year, The Crown fell off the top 10 of Netflix TV shows and has since been cancelled. Um, but to suggest TV ratings are to do with the royals is just daft. That value is thanks to the hard work and creativity of the UK's TV and film industry. Now, royal patronage of charities and informal endorsements of products are slightly more believable. But there isn't any evidence of an overall gain for the economy. Even if some charities benefit from uh, royal patronage and some brands sell more because of a fleeting association with Kate Middleton, that is a benefit for those charities and companies, not the economy. It doesn't increase the overall spend levels, just influences the preference, uh, preferences for where that money will be spent or donated. Now, having said that, there has been a new report just out recently by an organisation called uh, Giving Evidence, which specialises in supporting and advising the charity sector. They have looked at the issue of royal patrons for charities and they can find no evidence that having a royal patron makes the slightest bit of difference in terms of charity revenue and charity giving. So you know, to claim that there is a multi-million pound 
uplift for having uh, royals associated with charities simply uh, doesn't stack up. So those warrants and coats of arms, two things here. Firstly, this is a major part of the brand finance report, which tells us why brand finance wrote it in the first place. Now, the company is a consultancy firm that provides research data and advice to companies wanting to improve their brand image particularly in the luxury goods and services market. Now, I've met David Haig, Brand Finance's CEO. He's a charming and honest guy and knows what he's talking about when it comes to brand value. I have no real complaint about uh, brand finance itself. Companies are there to compete and make a profit. And for brand finance, this report has been excellent PR, giving them a huge boost in public awareness as a leading expert in their field. And it's not coincidence their first report came out in 2012, the year of the Jubilee and the year after the Kate and William wedding. Brand Finance saw an opportunity to get the media talking about them by publishing a report that feeds uh, the media circus that surrounded these major events. Now, part of Brand Finance's pitch to their own customers is to help them understand how to attract high spend customers. And in some countries, they argue, a product association with royalty can add significant value. Now, that association can come from getting a royal warrant, which is in the gift of senior royals, or by adopting a coat of arms that implies a royal seal of approval. Now, I'm not going to argue with brand finance about branding, but even David Haig admits in his report that the value of warrants isn't what it used to be and is very dependent on what you're selling. What's interesting, though, is that warrants are granted to companies who supply the royals. Now, the royals give the company an official state designation that confers an image of quality and respectability in return for gifts and supplies. And quite frankly, that's not really OK. Yet it's something that's been largely ignored for years. Now, as for coats of arms, well, uh, does it really make that much difference? And is that a reason for keeping the monarchy? Coats of arms aren't directly connected to the royals, they're fairly meaningless anyway, and could continue in a republic. Brand Finance does use republics figures on the cost of the royals. They claim that the cost is more than offset by these tangible and intangible assets. Well. I'm sorry, guys, but those numbers do not add up. The tangible assets are ours and ours to keep when the monarchy is gone. The intangible assets are at best wishful thinking. Now, the monarchy should go whatever the cost, but it is all cost and no benefit. So that's it from me for now. Don't forget, we are currently running an appeal aiming to raise £12,000 for our YouTube and podcast projects. Uh, you can go over to republic.org.uk forward slash millions and please do donate. That would be fantastic if you can do that. Uh, and that will help us reach millions more people around the country and around the world when we make our case for Britain becoming a republic. See you next time.